Hello, welcome and Happy New Year to you. This is the third day of 2021, and Christmas for us as Christians is not over. But during these 12 days of Christmas, we still figuratively speaking with the wise men, follow the star that would lead us to the place where the Christ child lies. May the light as our candles on the altar and in our Advent wreath, may the Christ light continue to guide you into the depths and the fullness of Christ's love, grace, and light. Welcome again, and let us worship God. May remember Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save his soul from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father, this blessed angel came. To certain shepherds brought tidings of the same How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star Covenant prayer. I wonder how many of us remember praying the covenant prayer. We're going to be doing that on this first Sunday of the year 2021 as a way of recommitting ourselves to be followers of Christ. Listen to the opening words. I am not my own self-made, self-reliant human being. In truth, O God, I am yours. We'll pray this at the end of the worship service. We also will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion this Sunday. And in addition, next, what we'll be doing is we're going to be honoring some of our outgoing council members. 
uh, who have served so faithfully for the last three years. I invite you now just to sit back and to enjoy honoring, honoring them with us now. Hi, I'm Joel Ferris. I'm the incoming council chair at Covenant for 2021. And one of the things I think we wanna do as we get into the new year here is look back on the prior year that we just uh, completed. And we wanna acknowledge those who have served in our, our membership here at Covenant and, uh, and give them a little token of our appreciation for all the hard work they put in. Uh, one of the things we're gonna do here, we've got seven members uh, retiring uh, this year. And we wanted to uh, give each of them a, a mug that's kind of a special mug that we created just for them. And let me read the uh, inscription on it. Who is greater, the one at the table or the one who serves? I am the one among you who serves. Luke twenty two twenty seven. So each, uh, each of our members will get one of these. And then we have three uh, special distinguished service plaques as well. And the four retiring council members are Jackie Hilbert Beltzman, Diane Ketchum, uh, Gordon Jackson, and Sergio Contreras. Hello, I'm Jackie Hilbert Beltzman. I've been with the council for three years. I've enjoyed it very much. I feel that we have made a lot of good decisions and, and I hope that we have expressed those to the congregation and we try to get your feedback. During this time of COVID and not meeting in person, I've especially enjoyed meeting with or calling different people. I find that they all want to get back to hugs and being friends again. Thank you. I'm Gordon Jackson, and I've been privileged to serve on the council for the past three years. My memories include most especially our retreats at the retreat center on the South Hill and uh, sitting by a log fire and uh, generally having great discussions. But we also had great discussions in our council meetings, sometimes uh, spirited debates, but it's been a privilege to work with a group of really committed people these past three years. It's been my privilege to be the pastor of Covenant uh, for five years and really such a privilege to work with a, a wonderful council. And <clears throat> we honor Gail Harris today um, with this, uh, in appreciation with this plaque. Um, and the words on this plaque speak for themselves. Thank you for your generous contributions of time and talent as our faithful secretary to church council. Your gifts have touched many lives and we are grateful. Thank you, Joel and Roger. It's been a pleasure to serve as the secretary for church council for several years. I've actually lost track. I also served on church council, and during that time I was the secretary. So this is a huge hole in my life, but I will survive, and I just really appreciate everybody that's helped make my job fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The second plaque that we <clears throat> will be presenting is to Tom Robinson. And uh, once again, the words say it all. Thank you for your generous contributions of time and talent as a faithful church council member and as a lay leader and member to the Pacific Northwest Annual Conference. Your leadership has touched many lives. And again, we are grateful. Well, thank you, Joel and Roger. That, that's unexpected. I, I, I very much appreciate that recognition. I did not expect that. Uh, it's been a pleasure to serve here at the church. Uh, to be part of church council and to be a lay representative to our annual conference has been uh, one of the privileges of my time here at Covenant. And I want to thank the congregation for the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Finally, to a lady who has so ably being chairperson of the church council, Teresa Sherman. Thank you for your generous contributions of time and talent as our faithful council chair. Your leadership has touched many lives and we are so grateful. Thank you, Joel and Roger. It has been my pleasure to serve as 
uh, chair of church council. I'm Teresa Sherman, and um, I had a year on council before I became chair. Um, I learned a lot from Kirk Fu, and I just have um, enjoyed it so much. Just great people that I've worked with, and I just thank you for that privilege. It's a wonderful feeling, experiencing light, overcoming darkness. And it's one of my favorite memories of Christmas Eve services, and I'm sure it's probably your favorite too. We arrive and we're given a small candle. And this year we printed onto the wax guard the words, even now, even now, the light of Christ is overwhelming the world. But sometimes that can be difficult to believe when we see the darkness and the violence and the wars and the hunger in our world. It's difficult to believe the light of Christ is overwhelming the world. And yet on Christmas Eve, we receive a candle and the minister or the leader lights his or her candle from the Christ candle whose birth we celebrate at Christmas time and then passes it on. Do you remember? Do you remember receiving the light of Christ and then turning to your neighbor and passing that light on to him or to her? And eventually, as we sing Silent Night, Holy Night, the entire darkened sanctuary is overwhelmed by light dispelling the darkness, how we need light to guide us. Duke Webb was his name, and it happened during this season of light. He took his two handguns and made his way in Wisconsin to a bowling lane, and there single-handedly and for no reason took the lives of three men and injured three others. And so as is our practice here at Covenant, every time there's such a senseless mass, mass killing, a very epitome of darkness, we hang a red crane surrounded by these countless thousands of white cranes to remember that we are people of the light and who seek to follow the light. How desperately we need light to guide us. Brene Brown is one of my favorite authors, and she has this to say, something which I've posted on my own Facebook page as a reminder to myself, we will not go back to normal, speaking about these COVID pandemic days. We will not go back to normal, normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal, other than we normalized greed, inequity, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, and lack. We should not long, she continues, we should not long to return, my friends. We are being given the opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity and nature. How desperately we need light to guide us. Our gospel this morning is filled with references to light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. When I hear this gospel, I can't help but think of Christmas Eve services and the candle lighting ceremony. The experience, the tangible experience of light overwhelming the darkness is real. And our gospel on this second Sunday after Christmas would remind us of this promise. At the right time, the word became flesh. That same word that was at the very beginning, that became incarnate, first of all, in creation, 
that same word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. How desperately we need a light to guide us. The wise men are following that star, and if we operate according to the liturgical calendar, they'll get there on January the 6th. What star are you following? What light will you let guide you? N.T. Wright has this to say about the Word made flesh, the same Word that was at the very beginning of time, the same Word that shone as light in the darkness, the darkness never being able to overcome it. N.T. Wright has this to say about the one that that star would guide the wise men to. He says, the whole point of the kingdom of God is Jesus has come to bear witness to the true truth, which is nonviolent. When God wants to take charge of the world, he doesn't send in the tanks, he sends in the poor and the meek. The light of the world was born as a baby amongst the poor as one of the poor. And meekness would characterize his life. And to the Roman Empire, he would not call for swords or chariots to come up against them. Rather, he would love unconditionally. And in loving unconditionally, he changed the world. What star are you following? What star am I following? How desperately we need not just any light to guide us, but we need a light which leads to the true truth, the one who was nonviolent, the one who was loving, the one who would never pull a trigger, the one who in his ordinary life would always share and forgive. May Christ, may the Christ light, this Christmas epiphany cycle burn in your heart and in my heart as I pray through us it begins to shine more brightly, enveloping the darkness not of a sanctuary but of the world as we follow the one true light, the Christ light. Amen. We come now to the celebration of the Lord's Supper, and if you haven't already got your grape juice and your bread ready, may I suggest that you just pause the video uh, and do so now if you'd like to participate. Carl and I also have found a delightful Seussical Communion Liturgy written in the form that Dr. Seuss writes his storybooks, meant to introduce not frivolity, but a sense of joy in a very meaningful sacrament. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. May your hearts be lightened and filled with God's love. We lift up our hearts and praise God above. Let us give thanks to the Lord God our Father. We thank God and praise Him. It isn't a bother. It is right and goodful, holy and wonderful, blessed and joyful, to give thanks to you, God, almighty and faithful. For it's you that has given us this worship time, filled with laughter, some holy humor and rhyme. It's you that has shown us your holy love that you have sent from heaven high up above. And so with your angels who first sang your song, we proclaim your goodness by singing along. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven is filled with your marvelous glory, earth is filled with your light. Blessed is he who comes in your name, Hosanna on high, we loudly proclaim. Holy God, it's your Son we remember today, Jesus Christ, the anointed whom we try to obey. He encouraged the poor and freed the oppressed and taught us that you care about the distressed. Through his suffering, death, and resurrection, he taught that your grace beats out our imperfection. 
He ascended to heaven and sits there beside you, but still remains with us in all that we do. On the night he was taken, he lifted some bread. He blessed it and broke it, and here's what he said. Dear friends, this is my body to you that I give. Take it, share it, in you I will live. From now on, whenever, wherever you meet, remember our time when this bread here you eat. When supper was over, he then took the cup. With praise and thanksgiving, he lifted it up. For the new covenant, this is my blood, a sign of the Lord's continuing love. For God has forgiven your every mistake, so trust in God's love when this drink you partake. May we offer ourselves for God's greater glory and proclaim what we know of this fabulous story. Christ Jesus, he died, but then rose again. He'll, He'll return, return here, here on earth. earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, come down on us gathered here. With this bread and this fruit of the vine, please appear. Make holy this food, fill us with your grace, so we proclaim gospel to the whole human race. We love you, Lord Jesus. We'll shout out again your glory and honor. Amen, amen and, and amen. amen. I invite you now, as I share the bread with Carla, for you to help yourself if you're celebrating by yourself, uh, or to share with the other people in your, in your living room as well. Carla, the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Roger, the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Roger, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. I invite you now as we move towards the conclusion of our worship service having been fed by word as well as by the sacrament of Holy Communion, at the beginning of 2021, to consider praying this prayer printed uh, on your screen. It is the covenant prepare, slightly modernized, uh, and I invite you, if you feel comfortable, to pray it with Carla and I now as we recommit ourselves to following Christ, the light of the world, in this new year. Let us pray together. I am, I am not, not my, my own self-made, self-reliant self human being. In, in truth, O oh God, I am yours. Make me into what you will. Make me a neighbor with those whom you will. Guide me on the easy path for you. Guide me on the rocky road for you. Whether I am to step up for you or step aside for you. Whether I am to be lifted high for you or brought low for you. Whether, Whether I become full or empty, with all things or with nothing, I give all that I have and all that I am for you. So be it. And may I always remember that you, O oh God, and I belong to each other. Amen. We have been fed by word and sacrament during this worship service. And as we conclude our time together, we extinguish the altar candles. But before we extinguish the Christ candle, we allow the love of Christ to begin to burn within our own hearts. And as Christ burns within our own hearts, we know that we are not just dismissed, we are not just free to go. Rather, we are sent in Christ's name, the light of the world's name, to live, work, play, and laugh in all that we do. Go in peace. Amen.
Some people, when they look up at those clouds, they have been taught to think, maybe that's what heaven's like. I often get asked, isn't it a bit odd the Christians banging on about the resurrection of Jesus? What's that got to do with real life? It's not up to us to build the kingdom of God. That's what God does. It's up to us to do the particular things that we're called to do, the things that right now give hope to the world. Surely we can have a perfectly good Christian moral standard or even a spirituality without having to say that once upon a time Jesus rose again from the dead. And people often hook that up with other big questions. Just what do we believe about heaven? Just what does the word resurrection itself actually mean? And what is the real Christian hope, both for us and for the world? Those are some of the big issues we'll be looking at. And I think you'll find that when you get a clearer view of what resurrection itself means, it puts everything else in a new light and helps you to make connections, but also much more to become people of hope in and for the world. That and other things like that is what this course is going to be all about. And I hope you'll really enjoy it. <laughs>